to round off our five games Saturday with four to come on Sunday and a big one on Monday too. It all began with confirmation of Norwich City's relegation and a big win for West Ham at Carrow Road and a big day for Mikel Antonio. Watford came from behind, two penalties from Troy Deeney. Huge win for them at Vicarage Road against Newcastle. Liverpool dropping points. Burnley hit the bar late on as well. 1-1 one, one at Anfield uh, between the champions and Sean Dyche's team. And Chelsea beaten comfortably 3-0 by Sheffield United who go into the top six and five of the best for Manchester City at the Amex. So, Manchester City, as I say, comfortably in second place, but then the subplot is very, very interesting. Chelsea 60, Leicester 59, Manchester United 58. A reminder, Leicester at Bournemouth tomorrow, Manchester United at home to Southampton Monday. If both Leicester and Manchester United win, Chelsea are out of the top four for the first time since mid-October and their top four destiny isn't in their own hands. Sheffield United up to sixth above Wolves. Arsenal, of course, place first tomorrow in the North London derby. As I say, that 4-0 defeat, confirmation of the fifth relegation from the Premier League tomorrow in the North London derby. As I say, that 4-0 defeat, confirmation of the fifth relegation from the Premier League for Norwich City. Huge wins for West Ham and Watford to take them both onto 34 points and just increase the challenge for Bournemouth and Villa to stay in the top flight this season. Raheem, another comprehensive win this week, but this one away from home as well. Just how satisfying a night has been for you personally and the team? Yeah, um, you know, disappointed last weekend. Um, with the, the loss away to um, Southampton, um, you know we we created chances, but I didn't think we finished them, and they were brilliant. And it was great to bounce back for a, you know a, another away win. Looking at the way you played tonight, was that Southampton 90 minutes still very much in your mind? One's got the sense that it might be. Yeah, um, you know I think the problem we've had this season is, you know we created a lot of chances, and you know last season, the season before, we had finished them and and very games early on. Um, but you know, this season we haven't had that slight bit of luck. But you know, we're growing uh, and we're doing the things right, and that's all we need to do is continue making chances. And um, you know, we can't complain. Well, you certainly made and took chances tonight. That's three for you. Takes you on to 27 all competitions, which is your best ever yeah. in, in a season. How important? Certainly made and took chances tonight. That's three for you. Takes you on to 27 all competitions, which is your best ever yeah. in, in a season. How important is something like that to you? Yeah, I so, said, you know, the most important thing for me um, is trying to have, you know, these value goals to, you know, add to the team. But at the end of the day, you know, it's to try and, you know, win the FA Cup final and try to win the Champions League as well. You know, otherwise these goals don't really mean mean anything. You know, I need to try and make these goals count. Well, it was a great first goal. Tell us a little bit more about the third one. Yeah, um, you know, I tried to flick over his head and you know, I see the keeper come out and I, I've headed it in. <laughs> <laughs> so it counts as two yeah, headers, counts. doesn't it? Thank you. You've got one eye on the uh, race for the golden boot now. Um, I just said to myself, I actually said to Ben earlier, um, you know, I'm on 40 now and I need to score a hat-trick today and I'm, I'm grateful that I scored a hat-trick. Well, you did. You got the match ball. Many congratulations. Thank well you. done tonight. Thank you very much. There he is with the match ball, as I say, his fifth for Manchester City. Uh, good evening for him. And he set City on their way and set the tone very early, didn't he? He did indeed. Um, again, we spoke about Raheem Sterling at half-time and about what he now gives this team. And, and he's got output now in his game. Um, so, again, a, a very strong performance for him. And I like the way that... You know, in that sort of game, which was almost like a practice match in the end for the City guys, like a training session, really, he still got an appetite to want to go and get goals. Like that third one was incredible. But, uh, but yeah, he got it all up and running. It and, uh, and from that moment onwards, really, it was pretty straightforward. Yeah, the first one you pointed out, he perhaps wouldn't have scored a couple of seasons ago. No, but you're right. This is almost a training ground goal, Steve. You know, get it there, come inside and just guide it around the defender. Keep it on the deck. Goalkeeper won't get to it. You know, be too fast. You know, he doesn't try and smash at it. Before, he used to snatch at things. But that is just... That's from the training ground there. The spaces, Brighton try and play football so they're a bit open. Just come inside, one or two touch, set your feet, bang. It's a great goal. And that is the big difference between Raheem Sterling. Before, he would have maybe over-dribbled that, but, you know, his numbers are improving all the time. Raheem's improving all the time. Another one here, really, training ground goal, I think. Outswinging corner. And two guys making that diagonal run. Rodri gets there first. If you don't deny that first contact, you can always be in trouble. This can happen. And I think Bernardo's on his heels and Gabriel Jesus does great there, Owen. Yeah, he's sharp. I, I
Love can always be in trouble. This can happen. And I think Bernardo's on his heels and Gabriel Jesus does great there, Owen. Yeah, he's sharp. I absolutely love his game. He's just, you know, he's got Sergio Aguero just in front of him, but you know, so it's hard for him to get those minutes that he needs. But uh, I mean, when they get the, the, the quantity of chances that City play is just is scary. We have Mahrez is in, in magnificent form and that ball there is, is crazy. Honestly, it's, I mean, he's chipping it over defenders that are, what, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and it literally just falls on Raheem's head. Everything is perfect. De Bruyne is way to pass. Mahrez picks it out. I mean, it's just... Good luck trying to stop that. Yeah, see, Brighton are trying to stay narrow. Bernardo there's afraid to get out to Mahrez. He wants to stay narrow and try and stay compact. And then you give good players room and they can just, as Owen says, they can just drop it on a plate. And Raheem Sterling says, thank you very much. I love this one. This is a training ground one, by the way. You don't see training ground throws that lead to goals often. But um, I think they've been working on that City. And again, Jesus, he's, you know, that's what he does better than Sergio Aguero. He presses the ball. And that's why Pep loves him. Make something of nothing. Look at that little set, bump, untouch from a throw. Addy Ryan makes a bit of a mess of it. Look at they just make something of nothing, and they get another goal. Just they just and that's the thing. They just keep pushing, even though they're way ahead. They just they're just so hungry to score. By now, it's agony as when you, <laughs> for, for for the Brighton players, it must have been awful the last 20 odd minutes, knowing that you're four down, and then when this one went in as well to make it five, you just praying for the referee just to listen. Can we all go home now? We've all had enough. You know, it's as simple as that because they're so dominant and so superior. Brilliant persistence, this from Raheem Sterling. Tremendous upper body strength he's got. Look, battling away, competing, put brave to stick his head on the end of that. I think, actually, personally, I think that is an own goal. I think Dan Byrne whacks that against the post and should have really done better with that. But. Sterling gets it. We won't tell Raheem, don't no, we? No, no, no. <laughs> that is the 19th time since Pep Guardiola took charge that City have scored five or more wow. in a league game. Now, after the game against Liverpool, where, of course, they could have had five as well, Raheem Sterling said in the interview afterwards, our Premier League season for next season starts tonight. Are they in some way laying down a marker ready for that momentum to, to re-challenge Liverpool? Steve, they've created... They, what, they've had 75 shots in the last three games. 70. For that momentum to, to re-challenge Liverpool. Steve, they've created... They, what, they've had 75 shots in the last three games. 75 shots in three games. I mean, I've never... No. I can't think of it. I've never heard of a team of 75 shots in three but, games. But also a team that have no chance of winning anything in the league. But they're like, always going to finish second. But you heard Raheem. And if you're playing in those games, they've got Champions League coming up. The boys want to play in that game. So the, to play in those games, the number's got to be there. Five against Newcastle could have been 10. That could have been 10 tonight. You know, and they're going to put, you know, if they're clinical, they'll, they'll put five, six past every team. And, uh, and the boys want to play in the Champions League final. Premier League's gone, but they're playing for Champions League places. Yeah, he probably, I would imagine the manager I mean, there would have probably said, like, have you got beaten nine times? Because you're so good and, you're, you're, and, it, and you've let yourself down in that risk. The manager I mean, there would have probably said, like, have you got beaten nine times? Because you're so good and, you're, you're, and, it, and you've let yourself down in that respect. I mean, look, let's not forget how brilliant Liverpool have been, but when you watch Man City play, and I, 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 how on earth have they been beaten by, by Norwich? You know, I know we've got to go back a, a good few months, but and teams like that this season, it's just unthinkable, really, that they should lose nine times because they are that good. I said at the start of the show, I think, I think a Guardiola team offers you the, the biggest challenges really that they should lose nine times because they are that good I said at the start of the show I think I think a Guardiola team offers you the, the biggest challenge as an opposing manager I really do and I, and I still believe that I still think he you have to think more about what he's doing with his team than when you come up against Liverpool Liverpool brilliant at what they do and they just do it so so ruthlessly but I think this City team can hurt you from so many different ways and so many different angles that it's it, trying to trying to find a way beyond them and past them is very, very difficult, I should imagine. Mm. And uh, funny enough, I spoke to him this week, Pep Guardiola. You can see he's hurting. He, and he used the word hurt because he's never been in this situation, has he, as a manager at any of his clubs? No, never, ever. Never been, you know, they're, literally, they've been blown away by, by Liverpool. But I think if he, he knows at the top of the pitch, that's all sorted. You know, all that is, is fine. He just probably needs two pieces he needs a left back and he needs a right footed centre back to go. And, and the rest of the team is ready to go. You think about what, what Liverpool did with Alisson and Van Dijk and they look almost unbeatable. City are there. You know, that front is, is better than anyone's. The midfield is there. A right-footed centre-back. Laporte's the best 
second best centre back in the Premier League. You've got Van Dijk and Lennart Laporte. So you need a left back. I don't think he really trusts Mendy Zinchenko. He's tried. Um, he's played well, but they they need more. So get a get a centre back, get a, a left back, and you know that gap won't be what. 20 points. Mm -hmm. It was just won't. Well. It was funny when I asked him actually how, how big a gap he's got to get to Liverpool. He said, Listen, I think there's five or six teams really? that can challenge for the Premier League next season. Yeah. There's not. Yeah. Uh, and I think he's, he's always very respectful and very courteous of, of, of other managers and other teams. Um, I would have to beg to differ with him there. I think he is, his team are other managers and other teams. Um, I would have to beg to differ with him there. I think he is. His team are the only ones I could see right now that could go beyond Liverpool next season and beat them. I, I think the others are, get, are getting closer. United are on a good roll at the moment and a good run. Are Chelsea ready to topple Liverpool or, or City? No, I don't think so. Um, I, I think right now, Guardiola's team are the only team I could see, Owen, that, that could that have got enough to, uh, to change things around next time. Yeah, and the only difference is, you know, I think... Klopp's teams, they press so well because City plays so much and they're always trying to play out. Klopp's press is just, in that front three, that's all the relentless. So they pick them off and they, you know, it's almost his kryptonite. But uh, I'm with Andy, you know, I don't think that's going to be that big a gap as it is this, this season, next season. I, I find it impossible. Nine losses for that City team. Yeah. It's so hard to believe. Indeed. OK, we'll have, uh, later in the show, we'll have 